He's nicknamed the daytime CEO and the nighttime watchman. I know by the end of this interview, you have a lot to learn, especially what entrepreneurship is and the areas to invest in. He is the CEO of the leading automobile consult company in the Western and Central regions, and by far one of the most successful youth in these regions. Today on Extensive Chat, we want to understand in simple terms what is entrepreneurship and where to invest in as the youth. And we centering major on entrepreneurship and surviving the vicissitude of business. My name is Anna Pesikos, and this is Extensive Chat. We are talking to Mr. Francis Etwahine, the CEO of Etwahine Automobile Consult. Welcome, sir. Thank you, my brother. So, what you are daytime CEO and night? <laughs> yes, as we all know. What, what should I? What is that supposed to mean? What does it mean? Yes, daytime CEO, which means I happen to be a CEO by day, mm -hmm. working just as we are here, and mostly at night to practicing some watch mind duties. So, what you don't sleep? Oh, we do have a schedule of sleep, but we mostly at night on. So I don't come to uh, the CEO work early. Oh, Usually okay. around nine ten before we uh, no be here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> meaning you go and sleep. So how many hours do you sleep in a day? Oh, averagely, let's say I have about five hours sleep. Five four hours. to five hours. Yeah. Wow. With this tight schedule, you're able to yeah. manage four or five hours sleep. Yes. Okay. Um, we want to know what entrepreneurship is, and by far you are one of the most successful youth in this automobile business and by extension even entrepreneurship in the western and central regions when we are talking about entrepreneurship your name comes to mind yeah. and it rings a bell loudly thank so you. we want to know what is entrepreneurship okay my brother thank you and uh, my regards to all your viewers i know your channel is really impacting the generation and we always need such things within the society because most people are silent enough that the good things that are supposed to come out that people are supposed to learn they are not getting it but most of the bad things are the only things that people are showcasing so when we see people like you who are also trying to at least promote the good things within the society and also inspire and motivate the youth especially the youth because i always have the youth at hand because we know that we all have greatness in us so back to your question about entrepreneurship entrepreneurship in simply i mean simple terms i would say a risk taker someone who is able to identify some problems and they try as much as possible to find solutions to the problems and in that in doing so they are able to build it up even from the scratch or even from a failed uh, agenda or something that didn't work in order to bring it to the limelight and at the point in time it becomes successful there is difference between a business person, a businessman, and an entrepreneur. Businessmen always look out for only what they think is ripe. Only things that they think is going to fetch money. These people are doing it, there is money into it, let me do it. That's the way of a businessman. But for an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur mostly concentrates on the impact on the generation, the impact on the society, how positive is going to affect the society how solutions are going to come out of problems that people are facing and out of that they make fortunes out of it all right so are you an entrepreneur a businessman i'm a full-time entrepreneur okay so you're taking risk always life itself is full of risk we say the new safe is taking risk and the new risk is playing it safe i hope you understand yes, what i'm deep. yes mm -hmm. the new safe is taking risk and the new risk is playing it safe because if you are not able to take risk on some things, if you don't take risk on your future, if you don't take risk on your ideas, uh, your potentials, you will never, you will just be in a survival mode. So many people are surviving <laughs> without living, without living to their full potential. About 85%, 90% of people living in this world are just in survival mode. They are living life in such a way that be, uh, they think their bills are being settled and that is all that is all what they need and day in there the moment that kind of uh, support is being taken you find yourself going deep within i mean deep down i mean uh, 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 you're going down 
you see so most people are in the survival mode but if you are able to take risk and in taking risk it is so beautiful to the extent that when the results starts coming when the results starts coming do yourself you'll be impressed imagine someone seeing that okay there is a whole lot of rubbish in town so what can i do to prevent this kind of issue this kind of problem within the society the person will think of okay let me organize uh, people who can clean the streets to make it look neat so that we don't have uh, choke gutters and those stuff in doing so gradually fortunes i mean will, will, you say we follow excellence and success will chase you success will be chasing you at a point in time a typical example let's look at zoom lion zoom lion wanted to get rid of waste within the society and now i think the owner of zoom lion uh, i don't know him but i think he's one of the richest, richest or wealthiest let me put this wealthiest, wealthiest people within the society so you always identify issues that are happening you take that risk sometimes people will talk about you even being a public speaker you, you people are so scared that okay what if i speak and i am uh, what do you call it well. and it doesn't go well maybe i make some of my words or especially with the ashantis people will be like uh, we will we'll, uh, uh, miss our, 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 our r and our l we'll, uh, yes so someone will be so scared meanwhile the person has the ability mm -hmm. to speak out to inspire people the ability to make changes within the society people have the voice that they can sing to bring change to the world they have the voice that can even inspire people but they are too scared to take that risk but the entrepreneur goes that way you take that risk so do you remember your first risk you took yeah what was it it has been uh, many i've taken many risks my in life risk but one of the uh, the one of the that i really remembered was when i decided to take my passion in i mean into the public domain which is which is you know i had the passion of eliminating fraudulent activities from the automobile industry personally i love cars and everything about cars so i as i started this buying and selling thing it got to a point that i wanted to have this automobile dealership and the initial name that even came in mind was safe link not that you need to mobile the initial name that came in mind was safe link automobile consort which means we are going to be a safe institution to help people buy and also sell cars but to do this you needed to register and in registering you have to make sure that as after you've registered you try as much as possible to, to bring it to the public but i i went to the uh, to gra and i was told that safe link is not available i can't take that name so i just had to rely on the name between and it worked and after everything as i started posting these things on facebook i remember one senior i mean colleague in police service called and was like why are you doing this do you want to lose your job or you want to face some queries no don't do it hide it whatever you want to do just do it underground don't bring it to the public it won't help you so what's the nighttime watchman means you're a policeman yes i'm a i'm a professional police officer okay so like at that moment it took boldness to say no to what he was saying because if i had listened to him by it's then ethical to be showing that as a police officer you know uh one thing that i always say is whatever you are doing and you know we have our conscience and you know as every human being irrespective of your belief whether you are a christian you're a muslim what you are doing if you know that it, it infringes upon the rights of other people i don't think you have to do it because you always have to have other people at heart but the moment you know that what you are doing is something that is not just about you it's not just self-seeking but you are trying to do something that in one way or the other will bring hope to humanity i think you have to go ahead and do it sometimes you face challenges sometimes you face so many accusations but once what you are doing is going to i mean it will go a long way to help humanity irrespective of what people are going to say or how it will be considered you do it and you know we say uh, success is made in the secret by the time you are struggling by the time you will be building that dream up you will not be recognized 
but when it comes out and people get to know the results that is where and everybody will know that yes what he started it wasn't for the bad reason but for the good reason because i think what we started in one way or the other we've created employment for now we have if we have to talk of a trend group of companies we have almost 18 to 20 i mean employees yes so at least if we have so we are giving out this support we've helped thousands of people secure their cars we've assisted so many people in especially things in relation with automobile and even with our motivational speeches so um yes that, that's yeah, great but what was the first business you did was it the automobile consult <laughs> okay you know where back, back to your journey yes back to your uh a short story of a twin I completed Bekwai's D senior high school mm -hmm. in the Ashanti region. And right after senior high school, I remember I never had a desire to move through the normal I mean part of life whereby someone will complete SHS, go to the university, seek for employment, become a banker or whatever, then from office to house, office to house without going. So right after SHS, fortunately for me, I had a chance to work with a business center, the African family, uh, that was in Jachi in the Ashanti region. And I worked there for some time as an attendant at the business center. And over there, they liked me a lot. The, the family liked me a lot. So at a point in time, I was given the opportunity to add whatever I want to add to the business center. So I added photography and video. So from there, I became a photographer. So as young as 18, 19 years, I was a photographer by then. But at that time, photography work was a job that looks like it's a job that old people were into it. So as a young guy at my age, being a photo, dark and whatever films, Fuji. I, yeah, Fuji. I bought like five of them and I started practicing. So I would pick the camera, insert the film, just uh, put it on this, this setting with this mode and I'll take a shot, take picture of the exact thing that I took. That was how I started. So I know that with this settings, this is the picture I took. So after printing out the films, I would just come back and analyze the pictures, which one was clear which one wasn't clear, those that were blur and other things. So with time, I was mastering it on my own. Because those days, if you are to go to a photographer that will please teach me, you know, it's not like these days that people are always, I mean, ready to assist. Because just as some of us, day in, day out, we help the youth, we, we I mean, we coach them on entrepreneurship, how you can also start something. Those days, it wasn't like that. So I mastered it by myself. And just within a matter of two weeks, I, I, I was becoming perfect on it. So I started having uh, what you call one or two contracts because those days people knew me by then. So I became a photographer along the line, added video to it. And fortunately for me, my mommy too was into, uh, into event decoration, wedding and other decoration. So you come to the uh, photocopy shop. We will do your type setting, your wedding invitation, everything. We will take the contract for the pictures, for the decorations. So as young as 18, 19, 20, Charlie, I was, an, I was a serious entrepreneur by then. <laughs> but we just had a passion for it. We loved that job. Yeah, that time, Scandi Multimedia by then. And we were doing, I mean, great. Until it got to a time that things started coming down. Whatever we started, started coming down. My cameras were getting spoiled. My printers, everything. But one, we, uh, the, I mean, the main channel that helped me got a chance into police was there was a photo lab at a doom. That's a big photo lab. The as in Kumasi, yeah, a doom Kumasi in the Ashanti region. Yes. Yeah, so one. Uh, tell her over there. She liked me so much because of the enthusiasm with which like, I was the youngest among all the photographers who were printing photo, uh, me pictures at that place. Yeah, so uh, she liked me to the extent that oh, most of the time she was always encouraging me. So one day I went there and she was like, Junior, 
it's all my old peers, they all call me junior. Because my daddy too is Francis at two and but he's late. Okay. May so rest in peace. So he was like, Junior, uh, I bought two police forms, but can you help me like sell one and maybe just take the money? Because I was told that if you have to fill the two forms, you will be disqualified. So through the photography and video that I got a chance to meet I mean that lady, to meet Irene over there. So she gave it to me, I placed it at my office, I was not even feeling it. Until things started coming down, I filled it, I sent it, and I, I it wasn't something that I even thought it would be, uh, there would even be a, a, a reply for it. Until one fateful afternoon, I was going to work, I had a call, and they were like, are you a 200 Francis? I was like, yeah. They said, okay, you have to come to a Doom Ghana post for your police enlistment letter. Your code is GP125. I went there directly and lo and behold, as I mentioned my code, they just gave me my letter and it was for police enlistment. I went by God's grace, passed through, went to police training school, Koforidia Police Training School in the year 2012, passed out as a police constable, posted to Atimpoku in the Eastern region and within a matter of three weeks, we had a signal that we've been reposted back to Takra. That was the first uh, 20. And in my squad, too, we were 70. 70 squad. Which year uh, was this? That was 2012. Mm -hmm. So out of the 70, I was the third. Uh, yes, among the 70. So our first 20, we were sent down to Takrade. So I called my mommy. I was like, Mommy, I'm told we are going to Takrade. I was like, Hey, Takrade, you don't know anyone there? I said, Yes, but I have to go. My next place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just packed everything. We came down to Takrade and I didn't know anybody here. And I remember when I was coming to Takrade, I came to Takrade with one school bag, one sports bag, and um, a few swimming bag. That was the bag that contained uh, my, my, the few was containing some little ut utensils that I've gathered. Those are, that's the property I came to Takrade with. So we landed here and which means our business part it's no more I mean in existence because I I finally gave the place out to the owner and I thanked them but they are still my family Auntie Grace and the family the uh, Mr. Feke is late but the family Susan Nancy they are all there and through that entrepreneurship it moved me into police service and in police service I realized that no I still have some potentials that I can give out I still have some giftings you know our job is different from our work we always say this, if you, are, if you get the, the chance to be in an institution, that is not, I mean, the end of it. That is not to say, okay, for this place there, uh, let me just rely on it for the rest of my life. Because we all have some giftings. Les Brown, my, my, my mentor, he always says that imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around you are the ghosts, the shadows of the ideas, the dreams that came to you when you were alive. And as you are dying, they are all they are they are with you there with large angry eyes, crying that we came to you and only you could have given us life. But as of the time you are, I mean, you are living, you are dying, you are they are all what gonna die with you. If we come to this point, that is where we realize that in life we must always, I mean, live full. We shouldn't die with our gifts still in us. We shouldn't die with our communication I mean, skills still in us. We shouldn't die with our motivational skills still in us. So I realized that I still have some potentials, that I can still do something better for the society. Does that, I mean, how come a 200 automobile consort came into existence? And I believe we've already shared some stories about mm -hmm. the, uh, what do you call it? The genesis of a 200 right. automobile, how we started yes, and, and what, those stuff. come into it proper? So you are into automobile, uh, automobile dealership. Yes. How many cars do you own now? Oh, now we have close to, you know, right now we are in partnership with mm -hmm. other, I mean, yes. So we have over 70 cars wow. on our list. Yes, we so have let's over. Talk about, let's um, take us through the journey. What was the first car you bought? What was the first car you sold? <laughs> how did you acquire that car? And how did the journey start? Okay, on my Facebook wall, you can see a real Maurice Austin. There is a red Maurice Austin on my Facebook wall, Francis the Two and Hane, Francis the Two and Hane Scandi. Yeah, there is a red Maurice Austin, which that was the first car I bought. That was that, the time I was practicing the photography and the video. That's when you bought that car. That was when I from bought that car from the photography. How that was, was my it? first car. How much was it? Oh, that that time, 
you'll be surprised. Uh, current seven thousand. So it was seventy million then. Seventy million? No. <laughs> seven hundred Ghana cities. Seven hundred Ghana. <laughs> seven million. Yeah, yeah, seven million by then. So um, profits from the photography. Yeah, profit from the photography. Wow. And you know one secret. As at the time I was not using a car during that photography work, my charges were very low. When I managed to get that car, a charge something that let's say you charge like fifty CDs for a program or a wedding, and someone will be complaining. When I had the car. You charge like 150 CDs and people will embrace it. Because of the car. Because of the car. What does it do? I tell you, you know, uh, sometimes, let me say, in brand, in uh, business, branding is one of the key things. Sometimes, you know, uh, on our part of the world, people always classify people, someone to be a worthy man by even the car he uses. That's, that's one thing that I've really, I mean, observed. Someone may be a contractor, he has the skills. You know, let's take this uh, normal, uh, artisans for example there are artisans who have the skills they have the energy to do whatever that I mean it's been expected of them but because they don't have car they don't have they, they don't have like a large tundra or a land cruiser mm -hmm. to indicate that they have I mean they, 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 have arrived. they, ha they have arrived the contract will not even be given to you so it, it, from that time now I learned some lessons in life I learned great lessons in life. So, so that from, was the first car. That was the first car I yeah. bought. That was the Maurice Austin mm -hmm. Cooper. So, so, but that was before police. Mm -hmm. I sold that car along the line before even I went back to police training. And from police, when I came down to Takrade, I decided to buy a motorcycle. I called my daddy, my late father, that daddy, I want to buy a motorcycle. Because those days I was living at the few Kuma Baras. Mm -hmm. I told him and he was like, no, Junior, I don't want you to buy a motor. So, if you don't mind, I have this old Mercedes Benz parked in the house. If you can send some money for us to fix the engine for you, because the engine was faulty, then you use that one for your mode of transport. So when Daddy brought out that proposal, I was like, okay, Daddy, I'm glad. I sent down some money. They repaired the engine for me. I went back to Kumasi to pick it up. So when I brought the car to Takrade, I also decided to take very good care of it. Because it was an old car, so I gave to one. Straight up friend of mine around my church, Assemblies of God, Grace Pentecostal at the Fikuma, there is a straight out there called Koli. So he, he had a, like body works on the car, James, my inspirator, sprayed it nicely. I placed some booster at the back and when, when I'm coming, Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So uh, fast forward, Daddy died a few months after repairing the car when I visited him back in Kumase. He died at St. Michael's Hospital. It was a big blow for me. And out of that, God seeing the person you love die in your own hands is very painful. And anytime I remember my daddy, I say, may his soul rest in perfect peace. You know, daddy was a very good friend of mine. You know, as daddy passed away, even the love alone and seeing the car, I decided to sell the car off and get something so that it wouldn't always remind me of him. And as I sold it, that was the beginning of my uh, automobile so how business. Much did you sell it? I sold that car for. I think some, something around 2,000, 2,000, 2,500 Ghana cities. And what did for you the bank. money for? Yeah, so as I sold that car, I didn't touch that money. Before I even sold, I started scouting for another car. So fortunately, I got a chance to uh, uh, inspect one other Mercedes C190 registered letter J. <laughs> and that car belonged to one police officer at uh, Swami Police Station. So I went there together with my daddy's mechanic who was always checking my daddy's car uh, mr kwabina so i went there with him we inspected the car and the, that car was going for four thousand five hundred ghana cities that was twice so i the, the price of the one i sold so i told him that say you know i like your car i'm a young police officer but i really like your car and i'm ready to buy it so if you can help me I want to make some deposit, give me the chance to come and pay the rest, I mean, within a month time. And seriously, the man too understood me. And because, you know, we all had this, we, were, we are all, I mean, we are all police officers. So he also understood me and that was the beginning of it. And I remember, you know, life when someone don't know, I mean, your dreams, you know, they wouldn't understand why you take some decisions. Because at a point in time, when I saw that Benz, I went in to buy a VW Passat 
And after buying the Passat, I remember there is one senior officer of mine who was like, how can you sell Benz and buy Passat? Because by then he was also using the same type of Benz. He didn't know my plans because I wanted to at least start this buying and selling uh, promoter uh, uh, business, uh, what do you call it, thing that I, I decided to. So I saw I, the Benz, the VW like this, I bought it for I think 4,005 spent some amount on it close to five thousand five sold it for seven thousand so gradually yeah gradually it was progressing and you know whatever you are doing you may think that no one is watching you there is always someone watching if you do something and do it right there are people who identify if you do it wrong too there are also people who will see it because along the line i never announced to anybody that i'm good at selling cars but people saw the potentials people saw the giftings in me so most of my friends started coming to me bringing their cars that oh you can see that you are good at selling cars and by then i was not even posting for sale on on cars before they realized now i've sold the car i was taking advantage of social media seriously i started restarted social media for a very long time before even people i mean so they started bringing their cars and you know i always say this life whatever you are going through today is something that is preparing you for the future these are some of the notes i want most of my i mean my fellow or my colleague youth to take note of whatever that you're going through today is preparing you for the future in the sense that those days daddy will always ask me to wash cars whether the car is not moving or it's moving you wash them like day in and day out without complaining but along the line that is what brought me the fortunes because when people wanted me to market their cars for them, they would bring the car and it would be very dirty. And once it's dirty, what you have to do is you have to wash it yourself, take pictures of it, let the person take it away whilst you'll be doing the marketing. There are some who will leave it with you or want to leave it with you, sell it and get us our money. Some too, they will just be having their car. And you know, within a matter of five, ten minutes, I'm done washing the car. So that kind of car wash alone. That's one of the main things that even I mean, brought me some of the fortunes that we've had today. Because I was not lazy on car wash. So even when we started our business at Tunyot Mobile, before we even employed people, sometimes when I'm for day duty, I will come and wash all the cars here, place my uh, stickers on it, leave for duty. When I close, then I'll come back to check on it. When someone calls me, then I respond with, you know, it has been one of the norms. So what? Yeah. So whatever you are being, I mean, you are going through. Sometimes our parents will be asking us to do some things, and we think that they are trying to be hard for us. In I can, you are saying, you are, you be a kind of say, so be bored, pump a man, no one shouting. In I can language, the more someone is maybe like uh, how punching you are punching your head mm -hmm. indirectly, the person is strengthening you. Yes, but you wouldn't know. So. It became simple and people started bringing their cars for me to sell and along the line i had a breakthrough from that that's what do you call a breakthrough yes let me tell this there is nothing like luck in life luck only comes when you are prepared for it like to have a normal luck whereby now i think most people think that okay like they see someone who has lived a, i mean a legacy and they think that the thing the person has acquired they can also gain it overnight it doesn't happen that way it takes consistent effort imagine seeing a a, a brand new musical group that just they they are just being uh what do you call it? they come out all of a sudden and everybody's healing them it's not out of that one day work it's because of some work they've done underground. Look at Sarkodie. Sarkodie came to light, but already he had been working over 10 years underground as an underground rapper. I was doing this underground for a very long time. Until one day, I came in contact with one flight lieutenant, Samuel Ponjan, who needed a car. I always mention his name whenever I'm being interviewed. Because God used him to move me into my greater I mean, fortunes. I came in contact with him. He was looking for a car I was marketing for someone. He wanted to buy that car by then. The owner didn't uh, agree to the price he wanted. I promised him that, oh, come on, I will help you get one. And indeed, I fulfilled my promise, got him a car within the shortest possible time. We became very good friends. And later, after selling my last car, he was the one who called me that, Joe, 
I have some 20,000 sitting somewhere. Would you mind picking this money and invest it into your business? That was the breakthrough period. That was the breakthrough was period. Like loan or a gift? You know, that was, uh, it was kind of a partnership amount. It wasn't a loan. It's a, it's a money he gave me. And what I did with the money was, before he even called me for that money, now I personally have also negotiated with someone who was having a Toyota Corolla 2006 model by then, unregistered at the same 20,000. But I didn't have money for that car. So it was the exact money, so money I needed. But I did something too. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I believe in Titan. Mm -hmm. I believe in uh, seed, what sowing. The, seed sowing. Before then, there is one secret, one thing I did. Some people may not believe it. But you know, when God does something for you, you can never take him out of the picture. Mm -hmm. And I always, anytime I'm being interviewed, I emphasize on it. Because I cannot just take that glory. No. I'm just a carnal man. Mm -hmm. But before I had that encounter, I was there one day. The last car I sold was a golf. After I sold that golf, I had some commitment to take care of. So it was left with some amount with me that I needed some other money to top up to buy a new car and sell. And right from there, I had the uh, what do you call it, the desire, or something just spoke to me that I should sow that money as a seed and see what God would do not any prophet not any pastor but your own confession my own convert yes so i just called my pastor's wife mama johnny uh reverend dr paul johnny's wife i worship at the assemblies of god grace pentecostal and i told her mommy this is what the lord is telling me so i sold that remaining amount as a seed and there is one i mean one thing i told god that god as i saw this money May I, a honey, never in my life lack a car. God, this is the capital. This is what I can call the capital I have for my business now. Even though it wasn't that much, but that was my main capital. So, so gave I gave out. everything out. And good. yeah, and just it, miraculously, you know, just two weeks, just two weeks after doing that, that was when I received that call from Flight Left and I said, well, Ponjan. 20, the twenty thousand. So we moved I uh, together with a friend who was living with me by then, Salom Beckley Dizar. He is with uh, he was uh, with me those days too. I was schooling. I started schooling at TTU for my uh, as mechanical engineer. Yeah. So he came from Accra and I gave him the chance to live in it. So he was a very good friend too. So we moved right from here that night to Koforidia. We went to inspect the car. Everything it was cool. Just that some one or two things needed to be done. We brought it down here, fixed all those things, and sold it for 25. I shared the profits equally with Flight Lessons and Upon Jan. So that was the beginning of our partnership. We worked, we bought several cars, we buy, we sell. And you know, life is in such a way that God always brings people that we call destiny helpers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing we always have to take a look at. As youth, we, when, sometimes we come in contact with people that we don't even know where they are coming from. But the way we will treat them, our behavior towards them, how truthful we will be to them. Those people may even be our destiny helpers in disguise that we wouldn't know. Sometimes that person may not even have the money to assist you. But the recommendation alone that the person will give you. The recommendation alone. So from there, I got a chance to meet so many people and the network. I was building a network because from time to time, as it stands now, I have almost over, currently have over 6,000 contacts. So the network alone that you will build as you are building up your, your, your as you are building up your dream as you are building up your future. So that's how come we had that breakthrough and it gave birth to all these companies, the, the the chain of companies that we are seeing. You see, so we can always get anything done, whatever we desire to do, whatever we put our minds on. Sometimes we are just have to get out of our own way. We human beings, we may even be the obstacles to our own greatness. Sometimes our destiny helpers may come and with our own behavior, we will work them out. So really, what, what is, how is the automobile dealership death like? Is it, is it a safe place to invest in? Yes, uh, talking about the automobile industry. Automobile industry is an industry that goes with passion. You know, most people see people, I um, mean, practicing this 
uh, kind of car garages and they think okay because this person is doing this I also have to dive into it you know if you have the passion for it there are people that everything about them is car they they think of cars the irrespective of the um, agenda whether male or female there are people who have the desire to because you know it's, it's it's very sad when someone is able to gather huge sum of money all over his life trying to buy a car and within a twinkle of an eye the person is being defrauded so if you have the passion to help humanity not just to look out for the profit in the automobile industry because I, I told you if we had to tell you some of the bad experiences we had you, you will feel for us but when you have the passion for it through it all through all the hardships you are able to put yourself together and definitely there is always light at the end of the tunnel you get the point so if you have passion for it it's beautiful because sometimes you may not even be getting the money but because of the passion you have you are able to build it up and gradually you get to the top you move out of the darkness and you get to the end of the tunnel so it's a beautiful avenue how much is a good capital to start business with oh that's what a question you know and it, the, the 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 key thing to start business it all starts with the mindset it's no you know monetary aspect of it comes most of the time when i say this people will be like oh no you know when people make some things they, they just talk anyhow that you don't need money to start business but i tell you if you have to start as an entrepreneur though we, we all uh, money counts as well but you should be able to start something before a third person or an investor someone will see you from a distance and will be able to say that no i think this person is doing well so i can like what do you call it? i can invest money in it or i can assist him with this but you can't be in your room and desire that oh i wish i start business so but i need some hundred thousand guarantee before i can start i always say this if you can't start small you can't start at all if you can't start small and in life if you don't have your own agenda someone else will push you into his or her agenda so you must have some plans sometimes you can even leverage it's not always about the money there are so many things going on you can leverage on other people you know all the great people you see around most of the time business most business it's not just about them a tree alone cannot do this you get it but as you start it and you go uh john d rockefeller says reputation is one of the key things as a young man if you build a reputation for yourself people will even support your business the main thing you have to do is to establish a reputation wherever you are once you have that reputation i tell you you will go far people will sponsor your business people will support your ideas it may not be easy you know whenever you are starting business even when you walk to people for support for help most 99 percent of anybody of uh, like of uh, of people will just deny you but if you are not able to give up then you even try to leverage on existing businesses you try to leverage what if what i mean by leveraging on others is that the, anybody anything that you want to start there are people who are already in it you can start by even providing service for them you can start by assisting them you can start by rendering like uh, promoting some of their art and in doing so gradually people will get to know that this is what this man is into now if we have to talk of automobile the first name that will come in mind will be oh let's call it the same way that if you have to talk of anything in relation to the media the first name that will come in mind will be oh let's call anakosi or let's call a jam parben they know about it just as some people wanted to set up a station they had no other person to call them to call a jam parben for his knowledge and ideas on it that's how it happens so you build a brand for yourself and going for it all other things comes easily people will believe in you and they will support you but if you don't have the mindset that is gonna work if you don't have the mindset that okay i'm going to start if you don't have the mindset that okay let me just start something even just with social media so there is nothing like a first amount to start business and okay which would be the areas you recommend that you to invest in you know uh, with this question you are asking areas you know we can't just be specific mm -hmm. you know it's not like okay there's the 10 uh, the so 10 you know, you know the 10 strategies to success or this no it's not like that you know life is full of so many things you know some let's take it that for a two automobile we started with automobile now we are into construction mm -hmm. you know we have scandalous construction and block factory now we have a uh, what do you call it foundation mm -hmm. 
we are scandalous engineering and supply we deal with the accessories and those things so once you start something go day in day out Definitely. as you that, yes day in, and as you you know i always encourage the youth to read you know great ideas are being gathered from reading because the experience of someone let's take someone like napoleon hill all his experience in life let's take like les brown let's like uh, let's take john d rockefeller even donald trump all their life experiences their failure their success you get the chance to read it within a book and once you read new ideas come i mean come in mind and i always encourage the reader it's not about copying it's not because you've seen an accuracy doing well with the media so like mandatory i also have to be in the media we all have some passions whatever passion you have that is your god-given work or your gifts that can bring a change to the world so you just build upon your passion and you can bring out something that is even new or something that someone has already built but you can also what uh, improve upon it so you may have the passion that okay let me uh, sing that's your that's your, that's your work you may be a banker but you have that passion for singing you have that passion for a whole lot of things you build upon it it's just like when covid came most people saw that okay uh, the sales of nose masks and those things were on the rise so someone who even sells rice instead of investing his money to, in his, his or her money to buy more rice to stock his shop ended up using his money to buy nose masks all because you have seen that money is into so house like, no but if you are to invest or if you are to build up on whatever you have passion in that is where you get a fortune it's not about copying but it's about doing it and doing it right and anything that is worth doing is worth even doing badly you may not know you may not have any ideas about it but once you start there are natural forces eh, that will pull the right people in your path i told you there are, it works it works like magic okay <laughs> yes <laughs> so you are not you, you can't prescribe that looking at the business environment in ghana maybe investing in water investing in food investing in um, hospitality delivery is the best um, place to so let me let, let's be very specific i have thousand ghana cities right now okay where should i invest in you have thousand ghana cities what should I the invest? first question i will ask you is nana Kwesi please uh if you are guaranteed success what exactly do you want to do if i'm guaranteed success yes that whatever you touch if you have the assurance that whatever you desire to do we are going to sponsor it let's say the president of the nation walks down here and tell you that nana Kwesi, uh whatever you want to do i'm ready to sponsor you mm-hmm. what exactly do you have in mind multimedia and communication, multimedia and, communication. Well, and you have thousand yeah, so. to start the multimedia and, and communication and the camera costs five thousand and above yes good with your thousand ghana cities i believe uh, you have a smartphone mm-hmm. that one you have it right yes so sometimes you there is no need to only have the camera as your own mm-hmm. i think there are already there are people who already have cameras mm-hmm. that you can help you can partner with them so as you partner with them in a way you've not used your thousand to buy a camera mm-hmm. but that thousand is a backup amount for you in terms of some one or two telling you with a thousand Ghana cities you will be able to at least leverage on your other friends who are having the camera you start by promoting or uh, advertising some things about this media things that you want to do gradually people will get to know that this is what you do and in building that brand for yourself it gets to a point that definitely there will be some one or two incomes coming and you know life we always have to ask ourselves who i mean you ask yourself who am i why am i here where am i going you get it so you know who you are you know what you are called for you know you have this higher calling and you should know why you are here at this point and where exactly you are going when you know where exactly you are going you will not use the money that you are to, supposed to use to buy a camera to uh pay for what do you call it something that is not that necessary you have a goal and in, you know once you let's read about this brian tracy's book brian tracy yet when you read about setting goals and how it helps if you have goals in life you are able to channel all your efforts into whatever that you are trying to do and before you realize you will be having your own camera but it's not like before you start now you should have the camera set you should have your mics everything set so gradually if you can't start small what 
you can't start at all. Wow, interesting. And um, your company has been very successful in receiving some awards, and the latest of it being the Western Regional Business Awards, which was held in 2020. And it was the best, just like you see here, um, the winner in the category of 2020 Automobile Company of the Year. Yes. Is it your first award? Yes, this is our first award. What really did the magic? With uh, the works of the great team, first of all, God, his favor upon our company because we can't always do anything without God. Yeah, we cannot do anything I mean, without him. He has always been with us. It's not luck, but it's God. And the team we have, talking of uh, starting from the least among them to the top, they've always been on point and we dedicate it to them. Because if the person who washes the car doesn't make it clean, it wouldn't even attract our customers. If the, the sales people are not able to receive the customers well, you know, I always talk about customer experience. What you leave in the mind of the customer when he visits your company, that is one thing that talks a lot. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be blowing your own trumpet, but the recommendations, the after sales, the reviews, that is one of the key things that will always promote a business. Because if it's not because of the customers, we wouldn't wake up and come and sit over here. But the experience we live in the minds of them, that is the thing. I mean, that's one major key that works a lot. That brings out the success that day in, day out, the 200 group of companies is always making, especially a 200 automobile consult. And one, one question before we go to the takeaways. We would want you to speak to the camera and uh, advise the youth on entrepreneurship but before then this is a question i would want to ask an entrepreneur like you okay. a successful businessman it's our political environment does it make it very conducive to succeed without any political affiliation yes this is a great question i believe today we're even talking about some of this thing. you know i always tell people that entrepreneurship doesn't have anything to do with politics uh, i i learned this from one stripe messiwa you can search for some of his arts on Facebook and Sase app. He's one of the great African uh, heroes and African entrepreneurs. He says, you know, being an entrepreneur, most people think that you have to get a political affiliation. But you can build your company, you can build your brand without any political affiliation. You'll be in the middle. This party will need your services. you provide it. Once you do excellent job, this party too will need your services, you provide it. So at the long run, you will be in the middle. It's not like unless you affiliate yourself, because it's, it's even, it's, it's most of the time, it's very deadly. It's very deadly. If you are not into full-time politics and you decide to uh, become politically affiliated with your company, because if you don't take care, if you expose yourself that much, this party will come and that wouldn't be your party as a result of that you may even lose some contracts that or some business that you were rendering so you have to be fair but firm fair but firm and you make sure that you provide excellent service right you know when you provide excellent service they, they can never do away with you you get it when you provide excellent service that's one thing that i always say that we, we should work more than we are paid for because if what is expected of your company is this, and you are able to at least spice it up, you always stand tall. So sometimes, uh, uh, due to political affiliation, someone may use his political uh, colors to take some contract from you or whatever. But it will get to a point that because of the services you were providing, and you knew what you were doing, you were doing it and doing it right, you will always be missed. And at the long run, they will still come back to you. So when you want to set up a business or you want to be an entrepreneur, politics should be out of it. You stay focused. This is what I want to do. This is, I mean, uh, the business or the enterprise I want to establish. I should be able to establish it and establish it in such a way that it will help humanity. First of all, whatever that we do in life, the more you, know, the more you help more people in this world, the more you attain success. So in everything that you are doing, you should always have humanity, I mean, on top of it. That is it going to help my generation? Is it going to impact my generation positively? Those are the things you look out for. And once you provide that kind of service, once you look at uh, Facebook, Facebook wanted to get people together 
he wanted people to be able to socialize with their old friends and it made him worthy you get it so the moment you look out for and do you think it's only uh, one political party on facebook no all of them are there all of them are marketing over there imagine you have the desire to set up this your media works what you are doing you can interview this party a or party b I've done that you've been doing it yes so it's not about the polit it's not about politics once you have that brand for yourself and what there are people within their parties that they can even uh, des uh, have the desire to go and interview most of these prominent people within both i mean uh, all of these parties but they will not even give them the chance because they think they are not worthy enough to do that but you don't believe you don't belong to any of them you stand i mean neutral but you have that platform so whatever that you you have the desire to you can do it do it right without any political affiliation and they will always be looking for you yes i, I hope we've had we've heard him and we've taken a lot of notes from what he's saying but mr Chan, we would want to give you the camera our demography is the teenagers to about 45 years speak to them why should they enter into entrepreneurship what is it that they should do in business and everything you need you want some takeaways from you so the camera is yours speak to them yes you know to my fellow youth I always say most people go through life with their emergency breaks on they go through life because of their past experiences and as a result of that they are not able to take a new step or they are not able to go through where there is no path and leave a trail i encourage you if you started something yesterday and it didn't work it doesn't mean that i mean you you shouldn't try again even if i speak today and my speech is not i mean my speech is not that good today it doesn't mean that i'm a bad speaker so that doesn't mean that i should give up the same thing implies to all of us we may you know so many youth are talented to the extent that they have the gifts that they can make a move on it but because of some past experience some failures what their uncles or their parents told them that we did this and it didn't work so you shouldn't also try it so they also give up you know we shouldn't give up on our dreams we should only hold the vision you know whatever i mean it's worth doing good it's also worth doing badly you can try something you really know how you shouldn't ask about the how the why how am i going to get the money how am i going to get there you just have to start it by holding the vision once you have the vision i mean ahead of you you have it in mind you 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 aspire to get you have the desire jim ron always talks about desire there are people who wish to get something and there are people who desire to get something if you wish risk is just a wish it's it's, 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 it's like it's, it's it's very i mean it's, it's it's very light compared to desire if you desire to get there if you desire to reach your greatness if you if you desire to utilize or to bring out everything in you you know life is full of seasons and times you may be in this season today it doesn't mean that winter is gonna stay forever the same way summer is not going to stay forever so whatever season you are in you you just work towards the other one that is coming ahead of you there is always light at the end of the tunnel i encourage the youth let's take out some entrepreneurial skills once we get a chance to be working in an institution it doesn't mean that that is where we are supposed to retire and get the golden clock that golden clock era is gone the golden clock era whereby our parents our grandfathers worked in institutions retired and went home with that golden clock is no more the era whereby grad Graduates were being I mean, scouted from institutions to come and work in in, in companies, in government or I ME mean, companies. It's no more. So this is about time. We are in information era. Whatever that you have, sometimes there are businesses even on our phones, our smartphones that we are having. It's a shop on its own that each and everyone can start something. Whatever dream you have, you know there are people who can only talk. Their 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 gift is to talk. To make the world a better place their gift is to sing to make the world a better place their gift is to cook to make the world a better place why are you sitting down why are you keeping your dreams in you just rely i mean relying on a, on a single paycheck thinking that okay i'm a man i'm a nurse i'm a i'm a teacher meanwhile we, we are just being in that what, what we call the survival mode we can explore sometimes it's not just even about the money it's about having a fulfilled life i always say this fulfilled life is different from becoming i mean rich 
If you live a fulfilled life, that's whereby you live full and you die empty. You live, I mean, to the extent that everything that you have in you, you bring it out. And in bringing it out, it makes impact to the generation. Because people are also going to benefit. Companies that you establish, your children are going to benefit. Your children's children are going to benefit. The people you employ, it creates employment for them. And it's also an avenue for them to also gather some cash to also, uh, what do you call it, start up something on their own. Once you are so indirectly, we are all creating employment, and very soon, unemployment rate will even be low without only relying on the government. I always say this we shouldn't ask what the government can do for us, or we shouldn't ask what the community can do for us. The question we must always ask ourselves anytime we wake up in the morning is what can I do to make my country a better place? What can I do for my community? Once you ask some of these questions, the world will become a better place because we will always be thinking entrepreneurial, we will always be thinking of things that we can do that others can also benefit from. So indirectly, if Mr. A is able to set this thing up, Mr. B also set this thing up, at least in one way or the other, it reduces the unemployment rate. I mean, the world will always become a beautiful place. So I encourage the youth, we need not to give up on our dreams. We need not to give up on our potentials. So many people have given up because of what an uncle told them. Because of what even sometimes uh, people that we in court, we, we call them men of God or some imams or some people told them that oh, for you, you can't do this, so just quit it. Sometimes even the pastor can just tell you that this thing that you've started there, it won't work, so just stop. Meanwhile, that person, is like he has in his own I mean, life agenda. You also have yours. The fact that the person is ahead of you. And so many people have given up on their dreams because of what some of these people told them. There is a guy who was going through crisis. He was going through financial difficulty. He consulted a, a spiritualist. And he told him that he is a reincarnation of Napoleon Hill. So... Uh, if he, he is able to work hard or if he is able to read and do much things he can just do as Napoleon Hill did and right from there the guy went searching for everything about Napoleon Hill he, he went to the libraries reading the biography of Napoleon Hill everything that things he did and, and within a matter of one year to two years he also he became a great person in the society he went back to the spiritualist. When uh, the spiritualist saw him, he started begging that, please, I beg you, please, I beg you, I'm sorry for what I did. He was like, oh no, I came to thank you. He was like, no, what I told you, it was a scam. It wasn't true. You were not, you, went, you, you are not, I mean, the reincarnation of any Napoleon. I only wanted to take money from you. But you know, with a subconscious mind, because he was told that he's a reincarnation of Napoleon Hill, he was able to work hard enough he was able to read wide and it, 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 like, indeed he was just like uh, Napoleon Hill so that's how it happens sometimes because of our mindset it's just like tying an animal to a chair and taking that chair or taking that tree whatever the animal was tied with taking it out you will take it out and the animal will still be standing there because initially he knew he was being tied meanwhile it had been freed that it can move to wherever it is I mean, wherever it finds itself. But because it, uh, within the subconscious mind, the animal thinks that he is so tight. That's how so many of us, how we are living our lives. We think that we cannot get there. For this office, we cannot enter. For this place, we cannot move. As a result of that, it affects us. So I think going for it, we can do whatever we desire to do. Whatever that we think of, whatever dream, whatever idea, we must make a move towards it. And definitely, things will work out definitely we will get there definitely we will achieve greatness you have greatness in you thank you i'm your man friends at you and the daytime see you the nice watchman always learn a thing or two anytime you meet him i'm sure these takeaways you had a whole um diary full of them and he's a man full of wisdom deep in entrepreneurship rooted in the christian values and he's a good friend as well so anytime we meet him these are some of the things we discussed and it was only fair to bring it to the camera so that you also learn some of these. My name is Nana Pisi Kumse and we've been privileged enough to be hosted in the office of Mr. Etuahene at the Etuahene Automobile Consult here in Takrade. And it's opposite the Jemima Hospital. Right opposite the hospital you find Etuahene Automobile where he will help you with everything automobile dealership. See you another time.